da, da, da. So now let's look at a window sill. So here is some blocking that will go around the perimeter of the window that will serve to anchor the window or you know provide a fastening um, backing for the window. And also if it allows for us to wrap the termination membrane around something that provides some profile. So we want water to have to work really hard to get inside the building. And when you build it up with a blocking like this, that's another bonus that you have is this change of plane makes makes it doesn't make it impossible because water has a way of finding its way but it makes it a little bit more difficult for water to get inside the building so the white material again is the transition membrane it goes around the window surround and it also goes over the vertical control joint because the air barrier which flies in next usually does not you know it is not able to span across that control joint opening the insulation, you see the wall ties, the window assembly comes in, the brick. Now we're going to have a cast stone sill or a precast concrete sill or a stone sill. Uh, anytime you have a masonry element like a window sill, we need to flash underneath it. So I just wanted to tell you that the, uh, the flashing is going to come in next because we're going to put masonry on top of it. So here we have uh, a little bit different than what we saw in the last detail. We have the stainless steels actually the through wall flashing, right? We're not we're not using a stainless steel drip edge and making it a, a, a transition to something more economical. I mean, it looks like the green material we're we're, we're tying in the stainless to the to the uh, transition membrane behind it. But the, I wanted to make you aware the stainless is is a rigid material, and we need a rigid material because we're spanning across the cavity. And if you use something flexible that could just droop into or sag into the cavity. Uh, you're not really effectively transporting moisture out of the wall. Uh, here at the windowsill, <clears throat> the flashing prevents water from getting into the wall because I'm gonna throw the sill on there. Um, this flashing, where it is immediately below the windowsill, it's, and, and you see the weeps, uh, the, the weep now has a horizontal orientation. It's that same cell vent we saw that's the, that's the configuration of, of a vertical head joint, but it's using a horizontal orientation here because um, that lends itself to how we're going to apply it. So, um, so flashing in this case prevents water from getting into the walls. It also provides a slip plane or a bond break. Here's a good example. We have a, let's say this is a cast stone sill. Okay, cast stone is a cementitious product, has Portland cement. What do we know about everything that has cement in it? We know that it shrinks. What do we know about clay brick? It expands. So look, we have a material that shrinks and a material that expands. What would happen if we did not have flashing separating them? Well, the, the independent movement of those two materials, which is in the exact opposite direction, would be restrained. So in this case, the flashing, it separates the different materials that move differently, and that's good.